Hi everyone, it's Phil from Tech for Text. Today we're going to be looking at this from Lexar. It's 2666 MHz desktop DDR4 memory. They've also brought out some laptop memory. We're going to have a look at that in another review. But today we're going to be looking at their desktop memory. Lexar are normally known for SD cards, USB flash drives, card readers, and recently SSD drives as well. And they have just launched their first product lines of DDR4 RAM. Okay, today we're looking at this Lexar desktop memory, what's running at 2,666 MHz, it's DDR4 and both sticks are 8 gig. we're testing two um, sticks because we're going to be using it in dual channel mode, if you don't know what that means, it's basically so the processor and other things in your computer can send more information to the memory and get information from the memory a lot quicker so dual channel means rather than having one it's got two so potentially it doesn't really work that way it can send and receive information twice as quick again that is a basic description there's a lot more into it than that if you want to read about it you can do online just do a search for dual channel memory what is it um, but let's have a quick look so on here you can see it's sort of a silver and white box it says what it is on the front you can see the memory sticker on the inside there on the back of the box it tells you a bit of information on there, so DDR4, 288 pins, 1.2 volts, the operating temperature is 0 to 85 degrees Celsius, and the form factor is standard uh, length, but it's 31.25 millimeters high. It doesn't um, say what the CAS rating is on there, but I've had a bit of research online and found out the CAS rating of that, or the CAS latency, is 19 as default. So that gives you a rough bit of information. So, so otherwise the box is pretty straightforward. Uh, let's have a look what's inside the box. So that is what you've got inside the box. You've got the memory and a quick installation guide. The quick installation guide does mention that there's a warranty with it, which is lifetime warranty. Uh, they haven't got back to me yet to tell me exactly what that is, if it's direct through the place you bought it from, or if it's direct through the manufacturer. I'm guessing you'd have to go to their website and do the warranty that way. It also tells you different things like don't bend them, bang them together, different things like that. Uh, pretty straightforward things. Memory can be delicate. It also shows you how to fit them there. We'll do a quick video showing you how to do that if you're unaware. It also shows you how to insert laptop memory. This isn't laptop memory, but we will be doing a video regarding that. Uh, and on the other side, it's in a different language. So uh, that's your English there. Just to let you know, uh, these are 8 gig sticks. Apparently, they're also doing 16 and 32 gigabyte sticks of this memory as well. Again, that may differ depending on your country. Uh, but here we go. So that's what the memory looks like. This memory is slightly different than a lot of memory because the sticker is on the reverse side. Most of the time, the sticker on memory is on the side where you have the chips, which is this side here. Normally the sticker would be over here and that would then face the CPU. But on this memory they put the sticker on the reverse which personally I prefer. I don't like stickers over the top of the memory because if you're uh, adding a heat sink uh, you obviously have a sticker in the way and you've got to really remove the sticker and then sometimes on some warranties removing the sticker will then void the warranty so if you add an aftermarket cooler or anything like that it can cause issues the memory itself by the looks of it doing a quick search of the numbers it looks like it's samsung chips on here so it gives you a rough idea other than that there is no information about what it is other than the sticker on the back which is there. 
Okay, so you can see our motherboard here, you can see our four memory slots there. Bear in mind, not all motherboards have four memory slots, some may only have two, uh, and in some cases, some can even have eight, potentially more, depending on the type of board, but in most computers, it's either two or four memory sticks it can take. Um, basics is, you get your stick of memory, in this case, we're going to use the Lexar ones, as we said, You'll have little clips either side, you need to make sure those clips are down in most cases. In some boards there may only be a clip on one side. And basics is, on the first one, which is usually the one closest to the processor or the fan on the processor, there, that's where you insert it. And then you push down on both sides. Ideally you need to do it both sides at the same time, but it's not always possible and it can be a bit tricky sometimes and a bit tight. So as you can see, it went in fairly easy. And I'll just zoom in just to show you again with a different memory stick. Now if you're using dual channel, which you have to have two identical sticks to do that, you then put it in not the next slot, but the next one to that, so you leave a gap. Um, so you put it in that one there, you line it up straight down and push down both sides at the same time. You do have to make sure this little hole here lines up with the with the notch on the board or in the slot, otherwise you'll be putting it in the wrong way and it won't fit. So you push down both sides at the same time. There you go, that went in a bit more evenly. Uh, and that's it. And then you can turn your computer on and away you go. So just to show you, I press the on button and you can see everything's starting up. Uh, this board does have a few lights on it so in compared to what you have on your computer at home it may look a little bit different but the slots are generally in the same place which is usually towards the top right of the inside of your computer in most cases. But there you go, you can see Windows has successfully started and it's now running 16 gigabytes of DDR4 memory, running at 2,666 megahertz. Okay, so what we're doing now is running PC Check from Eurosoft. This is the UEFI version to test the memory. So first of all, I'm going to check the system information on here. So just shows you, you can see the board we're using. It's a Z390 Aorus Elite. You can see all the information about it. Uh, you can see the BIOS version on there, so it's F10A processor. You've got the i7-9700KF running at 3.6 gigahertz, which is eight cores. Uh, and then you've got your memory there, uh, which is 16 gigabytes DDR4, and it's 2.66 gigahertz. So that's running obviously the 2,666 megahertz. Uh, setting so that's running as it should be um you can also see the graphics card and other information on there but the reason why we're doing this rather than screen capture we're directly through a camera so you can see what we're doing is so you can't turn around and say we're faking any results anything like that you're actually seeing it as we see it rather than using some form of capture device uh, which can come in handy sometimes, but I prefer to do it the old-fashioned way because it's more reliable and there's less chance you're going to say, oh, we faked the results. Um, so what we're going to do, I'm going to do an advanced script. I'm going to go onto system and obviously we want to test the memory. I'm going to select the tests, so we're going to choose what we're doing. Seating, quick, random data, address, inversion tree, stride, block rotation, and everything on there. So all the settings are on. Test parameters, we're going to do duration, and I'm going to set it to 48 hours. So this time in two days. Um, the testing will be done. So what we're going to do is stress test this memory just to see how good it is for 48 hours. That's a hell of a lot more than you get in most review places. They'll just test it for five minutes and go, yeah, that works. So we're going to see how reliable this memory actually is over a long period of time with the system running for 48 hours non-stop. And this is going to test the memory pretty much non-stop all for that 48 hours from different ways rather than just doing block tests or whatever it's going to do lots of different tests over and over and over again 48 hours so i'm going to run that script now 
and it's going to say how many times do I want to run, run that script. I'm doing once because it's already set up for 48 hours uh, and we're going to leave it so it doesn't stop on a fail so it'll keep on testing to see how many fails we actually get. So I'm going to press OK and that is now running uh, and it's checking so that's going to check each individual stick and go from there and as you can see it's passed three of the tests already, four of them and so on and that's going to keep doing that now for the next 48 hours. Some tests are more intense than others, some are just basically checking to make sure all the pins are connected properly uh, and so forth but it's lots of different tests it's doing rather than just one basic test over and over again. Okay, we're in the BIOS because I'm just going to overclock this memory just a little bit just to see how it goes. Again, it's not designed for overclocking, it's designed for a pretty decent, reliable system memory. But we're just going to see if it is able to cope. So we're just basically going to change the basic multiplier here, which takes it from 2666 MHz, let's up it to 3000. Um, let's have a look at the advanced memory settings and the timings. So that's the timings of 1922, so that should be fine. So it's basically keeping roughly the same sort of timings up there. Um, and I'm not even going to change the voltage. I'm going to leave the voltage on 1.2, which is there. Um, so all we've done is really up the speed of the memory. Uh, and we're going to see if it's able to cope. And Windows is going to be booting now. I'll do a little bit more testing afterwards but I'm pretty confident this will stay stable uh, at this sort of speed. Uh, so here we go, Windows starting up now. Let me open up Hardware Info. Yes. Let's wait for it to load. Move it onto the screen so you can see the info. And if you can see down the bottom, you can see the size 16 gigabyte DDR4 clock speed is 1500 MHz. As it's DDR memory, you multiply that by 2 uh, uh, to get the full score. So obviously 1500 times 2 is 3000 MHz. Um, so it's a 15 times clock at 100. You can see it's running at dual channel speed. And the timings, it looks like it's altered the timing slightly on there to 22, 22, 22, 22 48. Uh, even though in the bias it's set at 19, 22. But even so, uh, you are getting a overclock there and it is working as pretty much intended. Okay, so the 48 hours has now passed and so is the testing. So it's gone through, done all the testing and it didn't come up with a fail with any of the tests. That's 48 hours of testing straight with no issues. So that's pretty good to be honest with you. I can't complain at that at all. So it shows that the memory is extremely stable and reliable.